Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kybit Labs. In today's video, um, the, the third in this little series on current voltage and resistance in electric circuits, we're now focusing on resistance. And we're going to be discussing about resistance being energy dissipated, that dissipates in an electric circuit. So what I have here is I've got a really simplified diagram of a particular point in an electric circuit that we would call an, a resistor. Okay, remembering just from, from what we've done in the past that these little red buttons represent negatively charged electrons. And so what you can see here is that I have, so this bit in here is our resistor. I have, so simplified representations of, of kind of, of a metal wire of a certain width that's kind of over on, on opposite sides here with a really narrow point in the middle. Okay, and so this kind of representing where the, the electrons that are present in the metal wire at this end, and then, um, actually, and then I'll, I'll show that there are others over here. Okay, and then just get a, another couple to represent electrons that exist in the piece of metal in the middle. Okay, now, uh, one thing that I, well, I want you to be able to do, or, or can be a helpful thing to think of here, is thinking about when you're driving on the highway or you're driving on a multi-lane road that then all of a sudden narrows for roadworks or narrows because lanes are closed or narrows just because it mer you merge into a single lane. Um, and so that, that can be, be helpful what we're thinking about here. So we've talked about voltage being a pushing force or energy that's applied to electrons in an electric circuit. We've talked about current being the energy that's carried by those electrons in the electric circuit um, that, that relates to how many electrons are travelling um, through that circuit per second, that the more electrons that are travelling, there's more energy that is able to be, um, to be useful in that circuit or that's able to be transferred or transformed. Um, and the resistance here or a situation like this is often where that energy transformation is going to happen. Okay, so we have a narrow portion in the middle. We've got wide portions on the side. So I want you to imagine that we have um, that the voltage, um, the negative kind of charge of the voltage is over on this side in our circuit, you know, and then the positive is, is beyond this point. Okay, so what that means is that electrons in our circuit are going to be flowing from left to right as you see it. Okay, well, along the direction those arrows I've just drawn. Okay, so they've been pushing, and so these electrons kind of push, and then they push, and, it, you know, each one is kind of pushing the next one and the next one, and then we get to a point here where it's narrowed. The piece of metal is much narrower. And so then what happens is that then in order for that energy, in order for that movement to travel through this narrow section, it is a lot more difficult. Okay, that it is slowing down. It's like going from three lanes down to a single lane and where all those cars need to merge together into the same lane. It takes time. That's where your traffic jams tend to happen because it banks up. And so you know, and then this one kind of pushes on this electron, which pushes through here and it pushes here. And then once we pass through the other side, that the pushing is easy and it can move, continue to move um, in that same direction. And so at this point, so what we're saying is that our current has slowed. Okay, that the idea is that it's difficult for the current to flow in this particular section. Okay, because we've narrowed and, and so then, then it's more difficult for the, that energy to be passed through. And so what then happens is that, now if I use a blue marker because, you know, production values, that this point here is where energy is likely to be lost from our circuit. And so we've got energy that might be lost over here, over here, over here, over here. It's, it's being lost or it's being transformed um, in this section, okay, it's probably it's more appropriate to talk about the energy transformation because losing we're saying energy energy loss is a, perhaps a little bit confusing because it's like okay, well, you know, where did it go? You know, is it behind the couch? No, it's actually transformed into a different type of energy that's gone somewhere else out of the circuit, um, and so that these electrons that pass through the, the energy. And the collisions on the other side of the pushing is not quite as strong as it was going in. It's, there is energy that has been lost all the way through here. And so this might be transformation into heat. It might be transformation into light. It might be transformation into sound. Or it could be mechanical energy, so actually causing a pushing, you know, or, or an expansion or something that actually kind of moves um, through this point. 
Okay, and so the idea that we would say is that at this point here, that the energy has dissipated. Okay, so if, if you haven't heard that word before, so the idea that it dissipates like, like the idea, you know, you do a, a clap, in a, a big loud clap in a, in a quiet room and then the sound kind of is really loud and then it just kind of backs off. That it just, it fades out or it dissipates or that it, it starts at a certain point and it spreads out kind of into nothingness um, as you move further away. It dissipates, it's, it leaves that system and goes lots of other places in lots of other ways. So as we have this, this part which gives a resistance to that current, that so that it doesn't flow through it so easily, that some of its energy is transformed into other types that then can be used for other things. Now, the reality is that every piece of metal wire has a certain amount of resistance in it. There is, it, it is impossible to have something with completely zero resistance. We have, you know, we can lower it down as, as low as physically possible, but it's just, it's one of the laws of the universe that some of that energy is going to be lost as the electrons travel through the wire. That's partly why we need to continue to apply a voltage because the idea is that as it travels all the way back around to the to the other end of the circuit, that it needs to we need to apply more energy in order to to get them the moving again. Okay, it's like pumping water around kind of a circuit. But the idea is that eventually it will slow down and stop, so you need to pump it again um, because of because of that energy loss. Now, th this is not always unintentional. Um, when we use things like light globes or speakers or, you know, like an actuator in, a, in, a, in an electric arm, like, a, you know, the wings of a plane or something like that, we're using that energy for something useful. You know, you have an electric light, you are, you are causing the current to flow through a really thin piece of metal with high resistance and it gives off that energy to, in other forms like heat and light. Um, that's intentional. That's purposeful. It does something useful but it still is actually a energy that's dissipating out of that circuit. It's um, in, through the form of resistance. So resistance being a, is a property, we give it the capital letter of R as our symbol. We measure resistance in ohms. So the more resistance, more energy that's dissipated. Okay, so more resistance equals more dissipated. Okay, so more energy that's actually being that, that is being lost from the circuit um, and then needing to be replaced as, as we, we make our way back to the voltage. Okay, and so it's, you know, we represent it with these narrow points or it's maybe it's a material itself that is harder to get through, not necessarily narrower. Um, yeah, all, all sorts of different things. Now we can have substances which are at what we call a fixed resistor, have a certain amount of resistance. Um, and so therefore then they lose a certain amount of energy or we have can have a resistor which is changeable or variable so it provides a, a particular amount of resistance um, depending you know we can make it less or we can make it more that's basically how like dimmer switches on your lights work that and in, in you're controlling how much resistance there is to that flow of that current and that affects how much light gets given out okay so when we've been thinking about resistance we've been thinking about how current is actually caused to, to slow down for some reason, the flow of that current is, is slower, whether it's a narrow section, whether it's a material that's hard to get through, that as it does that, as it encounters resistance, that slowing down, that energy is lost or transformed into other types that can be useful, that is we say the energy has dissipated. Okay, and the more that resistance, the more the energy that is dissipated. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.